Good morning and welcome. We are so glad that you have joined us, even if it is virtually. We want you to know that our plan next Sunday is to have live in-person services. We recognize that it does depend upon what the governor does this week, but that is our plan. It may be only 75 people, but what we want to know, what we want you to know is, is that that is our plan at the moment. We will be communicating by email. If you don't receive our regular emails, either through the bulletin or through our uh, email distribution you, uh, list that I send out, call the office this week and we will make sure and put you on that. But our plan and our prayer and our hope is, is that next Sunday we can do this in person. We also want you to know that through this Advent season, we have some special kids videos that will be prepared just for your children. You can find them by going to the Angus Church of the Nazarene Facebook page. And there is a link there to the Angus Kids Club. And again, each week you will find videos there, especially for the kids, and we hope that you will do that. This is, of course, the beginning of the Advent season. We come together today and each week we'll, we will be lighting the candle and we will be sharing with you just a little bit about the meaning of Advent. Our meaning and our candle this morning is the candle of hope. It begins with this reading out of Isaiah chapter nine, verses two through seven. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light and on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born. To us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulders and his name will be called Wonderful. Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish it. Henry Nouwen, um, a, a, a famous Christian writer and a famous Christian um, uh, apologist writes these words, our salvation comes from something small, tender and vulnerable, something hardly noticeable. God, who is the creator of the universe, comes to us in smallness, in weakness, and in hiddenness. I find this a hopeful message. Somehow I keep expecting loud and impressive events to convince me and others of God's saving power, but over and over and over again, I am reminded that spectacles, power plays, and big events are the ways of the world. Our temptation is to be distracted by them, to be made blind to the shoot that will sprout out from Jesse's stump. When I have no eyes for the small signs of God's presence, the smile of a baby, the carefree play of the children, the words of encouragement and gestures of love offered by friends, I will always be tempted to despair. The small child of Bethlehem, the unknown young man of Nazareth, the, the rejected preacher, the naked man on the cross, he asks for our full attention. 
The work of salvation that takes place in the midst of a world that continues to shout and scream and overwhelm us with its claims and with its promises, but the promise that is hidden in the shoot that sprouts from the stump of Jesse, a shoot that hardly anyone notices at all. That is hope. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots a branch that will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, with the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. Each Sunday during Advent, we have a special video to go along with our candle and our Advent reading that reminds us today we have hope. Watch this with us. Yesterday, I had the privilege once again of going up to the hospital and praying with patients who requested it. And for the second time, I was able to enter into the COVID unit. It is full. In most of the rooms, there are two patients per room. As I prepared to walk into the first room and pray with them and try and bring a ray of hope. The two patients are separated by a curtain, so I saw just the first one, and I recognized her almost immediately. It's someone that I know, someone that I care about, someone who once was a part of Angus Church. 
And as I walked in to pray with her, I prayed that God would give hope. Walked around the curtain and a woman who lay there that I didn't at first recognize. Once again, when I recognize there is someone that I know, someone that I've spoken with many times, once was a part of Angus Church and a part of what we do until circumstances dictated otherwise. As I prayed with her, I tried to bring hope. As I went into each room, I tried to bring hope. Our hope is in a savior who has come. That's what Advent means. It is coming. But let me tell you, it is not in a savior who came. Oh, he did. But it is in a savior who is coming. This morning, we sing to the king. We sing and we lift hope and we lift praise in who he is. I invite you to sing with us, to join with us as we praise the King. He is coming to reign, amen? Amen. We're going to sing to the King who is coming to reign. Join us, won't you? Sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation His empire shall bring. And joy to the nations when Jesus is King. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. For His returning, we watch and we pray. We will be ready the dawn of that day. We'll join in singing with all the redeemed. Satan is vanquished and Jesus is King. Yeah. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. Come, let us sing a song. A song declaring we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise, sing now with voices raised to Jesus, sing to the King. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus, He's all we need. Come on now. Lift up a heart of praise, sing now with voices raised to Jesus, sing to the King. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus, he's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise, sing now with voices raised to Jesus, sing to the King. Lift up, lift up a heart of praise, sing now with voices raised to Jesus, 
sing to the king. All right. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 we'll see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 face of the earth. The Lord is his name. For behold, he who forms mountains and creates the wind and declares to man what are his thoughts, he who makes known dawn into darkness and treads on the high places of the earth, the Lord God of hosts is his name.
Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of his praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idiots, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. I'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. Heavenly Father, we come to the place in our lives when we realize, Heavenly Father, Lord, that nothing but you will do. I know, God, we tried so many things and we've sought joy and happiness and so many things that are fleeting, Heavenly Father, and it's taken us a while, Heavenly Father, to realize, Heavenly Father, that nothing satisfies like you. Nothing. And so, Heavenly Father, here we are right now, Lord, as the body of Christ, Heavenly Father. We worship, Heavenly Father, in person. And then we worship, Heavenly Father, with those, Lord, that can't be here today. But nonetheless, Heavenly Father, we are the body of Christ. We are your children, and we worship together, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we think of the hope that you bring. Lord, and how you came down, Heavenly Father, the first time, Lord, you came down from the heavens and you came in the form of a baby, Heavenly Father. From all that heaven had to offer, Lord, you came. And we read, Heavenly Father, how you suffered, Heavenly Father, and how you gave yourself as a servant, even unto death, Lord. So we worship you today. We worship the first time, but Lord, we look forward with hope to the next time that you come. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. And open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, and all for love's sake became Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to 
After this I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven and the voice I heard speaking to me like a trumpet said come up here and I will show you what may what must take place after this at once I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it and the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Cornelian a rainbow resembling an, em an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were the 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their uh, uh, crowns of gold on their head. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were burning. These, the throne, these are the seven spirits of God. And also before the throne, there were what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures. And they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like that of a lion. The second was like that of an ox. The third had the face like a man and the fourth like an, a, an eagle that was flying. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and covered with eyes around, even under their wings, day and night. They never stopped saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who is, who was, who is and who is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. We have come to worship Him. We have come to praise Him this morning. Here we are to worship Him. As we pray, I know there are a number of needs. I know there are families who are hurting and struggling. When I walked out of that COVID, that last room in the COVID unit yesterday, I met one of the nurses who was going back and forth. A few minutes earlier, one of the other nurses had come out of a room that I didn't have the opportunity to go into. And as she took off her mask and as she walked by one of the other techs, she said, she's not gonna make it. There will come a day when life here will end. It may be because of COVID. It may be because of cancer or some other sickness and disease. Who knows what it may be? But the hope that we have, the hope that we find in Jesus Christ 
is a hope in the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. Here I am to worship. I want us to sing that chorus again. And as we do so, I want us to worship him. We have come to worship today. As we pray, I want you to lift needs where you are. But I'd encourage you. As I walked out, I spoke with three different nurses and I told them as I looked into their eyes, eyes with circles underneath, eyes of pain, eyes that showed that they are weary to the bone. We, the church, are praying for you. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for our healthcare workers. Let's pray for our nation that we would worship him in this Advent season. Let's sing it again, can't we? Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. We have a hope and our hope is built upon you. Our hope is not in this world. Our hope is not in our health or our health insurance plan. Our hope is not in doctors or nurses. Our hope is not in a cure. Our hope is not in a government. Our hope is not in a political party. Our hope is not in a man or a woman. Our hope is in you. And it is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And we worship you today. We worship in your presence. We worship you because you are worthy of our worship and our adoration and our praise. Father, I pray this morning for each one that is listening, whether live or recorded, you know, you know our hearts, you know exactly what we need. And I pray that we would be open to you I pray that we would listen to you, to your voice, to what you have to say and the ways that you have to move and work. I pray for each person on that COVID unit. I pray, oh God, that they would know hope this morning, not in medicine, not in doctors and nurses, but in you. Some of them will not make it. And this is just a microcosm of our world. Some of them will not go home and see their family again. May their hope not be in this world, but may it be in you. I pray for every doctor, every nurse that is worn to the bone every technician as they move in and out of those rooms. 
every custodian that cleans those floors and cleans those rooms. I pray that you would be with our healthcare workers, that you would lift them and that you would encourage them. I pray, oh God, that you would be with every need. There are family members that we have been praying for. There are people that we love, that we cherish, that we have been praying for. We lift them to you and we worship you. We worship the one who is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, to whom we cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together this Advent season, we are going to be looking at these themes of Advent, but it's going to be a little bit different this year. We have some humor that we're going to mix in with this. We have a video each week and it is a video as if it were a, a man on the scene kind of video, checking out a church checking out a group of people who are getting ready for their Christmas pageant. I invite you to watch along as we watch this first one. This is, this the, is the story of a ragtag bunch of church members who set out to perform a Christmas play and the director who tried his hardest to just keep it all together. The glory of Christmas. Hi, my name's Joel. I'm the director of our church play, The Glory of Christmas. This is my 12th year. We're okay, just the stained glass window. It's going great. Uh, the only thing that we lacked was uh, someone to play the role of Mary up until yesterday, but then I found her and she, she's perfect. I got the role of Mary because I'm 31 weeks pregnant. Yep, two kids in college and then surprise! <laughs> we're just so, we're so full of joy. I, I can't act, Joel. There's no way I can sell this. No, 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 not true. Your audition was fantastic. How can it be me? How can I be highly flavored by God, did I just say flavor? Why can't I stop talking about food? Ah, uh, she's perfect. Oh, hey, you're you're Joseph. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm Heather. I play Mary, your wife. Oh. Mm-hmm. I remember you. Oh. You played bunco with my mom. You know, what is Bunko? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nice to meet you. Mm -mm. You must mentally sink into her situation. Yes, yes. Go spend the night in a barn somewhere. The hay will trigger something deep within you. Sorry. Yeah, it'll trigger something. Trigger something that don't need a hand in histamine. 
Mm. This is good. Ooh. I'm the least likely person to play Mary, let alone deliver the Son of God. I'm a middle-aged former soccer mom. And the truth is that this baby disrupted some pretty amazing plans we had for our lives. Things we've been looking forward to for years. Okay, Mary and Joseph, let's take it back to scene 11. Scene 11, please. Maybe that's how Mary felt. Maybe people stared. Unsure of what to tell her. Maybe she doubted. Maybe she doubted, even though God told her not to fear. And then she trusted. She trusted. She trusted that what God was doing would bring the greatest kind of joy. She would just, just let go. Let go of her plans, her questions, and... Just let the good shepherd carry you. <laughs> let the good shepherd carry me. the good shepherd carry you hope I want to read to you the Christmas story or at least a portion of it out of Luke chapter 2 or out of Luke chapter 1 beginning in verse 26 I'm reading out of the passion translation sometimes the story becomes so familiar that um, we don't really listen we don't really hear it but I invite you, listen closely. During the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God's presence to an unmarried girl named Mary, living in Nazareth, a town in Galilee. She was engaged to a man named Joseph, a true descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and he said, grace to you, young woman. For the Lord is with you, and so you are anointed with great favor. Mary was deeply troubled over the words of the angel and bewildered over what this may mean for her. But the angel reassured her, saying, Do not yield to your fear, Mary, for the Lord has found delight in you and has chosen to surprise you with a wonderful gift. You will become pregnant with a baby boy and you are to name him Jesus. He will be supreme and will be known as the son of the highest and the Lord God will enthrone him as king on his ancestor David's throne. He will reign as king of Israel forever and his reign will know no limit. Mary said, how can this happen? I'm still a virgin. And Gabriel answered, the spirit of holiness will fall upon you and almighty God will spread his shadow of power over you in a cloud of glory. This is why the child born to you will be holy and he will be called the son of God. What's more, your aged Aunt Elizabeth has also become pregnant with a son. The barren one is now in her sixth month. Not one promise from God is empty of power for nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary responded, this is amazing. I will be the mother for the Lord, as his servant, I accept whatever he has for me. May everything you have told me come to pass. 
and the angel left her. Advent. It means coming. It means God is coming and it begins where we find this story, but it begins with hope. As I begin this series of four sermons, I want to ask you a good question that I really want you to ask yourself. Do you really think God has a plan for you? Do you really think that God has a plan for you? Not a predetermined course of everything that's going to happen and everything that you're going to do, but a plan that will make an incredible difference in the world, an incredible difference in your life for the time that you are living. You see, God purposed that you and I would be born right now for this time and for this place. It's God's determination. So I want to ask you to be honest with yourself right now. If you could for a minute, I want to ask you to forget the Christmas story. Forget what you know. You see, I read out of the Passion Translation because the NIV and the King James, sometimes they're so familiar we really don't listen. But I'm going to even ask you just to forget for just a few minutes. If God had come to you and asked you to come up with a plan of how his son would come into the world, what would that plan be? How would we think about it? What would we do during that time? Now, you see, the thing is, is that we don't think like God. The problem is we know the story and we know what God did. But if we didn't know, oh, we would have probably proclaimed that his son would be born in the richest of circumstances. After all, he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That he would be born in a palace surrounded by beauty and surrounded by the very best of all. But thank God. He didn't ask us. You saw and you heard the line in the video there at the end. Let the good shepherd carry you. Well, can I tell you that he not only wants to carry you, he wants you to let him do so. He not only wants to carry you and he not only will carry you, but he wants us to allow him to do so. This is one of the most glorious parts of this, the greatest story that has ever been told. It is hope for every one of us. You see, the good shepherd is more than able to carry all of the weight that might be pressing on your shoulders, to carry everything that might be weighing you down in a season of COVID, in a season of, uh, uh, of a horrific political landscape, in a season where the world is in turmoil everywhere that we go, all of that weight that presses down us. You know that word weight might be one of the most appropriate words for the glory of Christmas. It's interesting because the Hebrew word for glory is the word kavod. It's there on your screen, kavod. But the word not only means glory, it also means weight. W-E-I-G-H-T. The glory of Christmas has an aspect of weightiness. If we aren't careful in this Christmas season, we get caught up in all of the crass commercialism. I am so sick and tired of every ad that comes on my iPad, of every ad that comes on television telling us that Black Friday has been extended through the entire Christmas season. If it wasn't bad enough that the Friday after Thanksgiving, we, we crawl over one another, we knock down security guards to get that 76-inch flat screen TV. Now it's everywhere. If we are not careful, the superficial commercialism of this time overwhelms us. At the center of Christmas is this weightiness 
It is an importance. It is a deference and a respect that is filled to overflowing with honor and majesty. You see, we cannot, we cannot allow the unrealistic expectations of Christmas that everything be perfect, that we go and see everyone, that we make sure that we get a card off to everyone, that we make sure that we do everything that we supposed to, that we're supposed to do. Folks, it is unrealistic what we have made of Christmas. Christmas. I want us to see the true glory of Christmas. I want us to understand the good shepherd. Listen to me, please. Don't rush past this. The good shepherd will carry us. He's not asking us to go through this Advent season by just making it, by just getting through, by gritting our teeth and doing it. He wants to carry you. May this season become a season, this Advent season of much needed and meaningful hope and peace and love and joy. He wants us to experience this, but listen to me. He may change your plans. He may change everything about it. You remember in the video, the 31-week pregnant Mary, her life plans were completely altered. Two children in college and one in the womb was not what she mapped out for her life. But whatever plans may have come, it did not couple diapers and college tuition together. God reminds us that he knows a thing or two about plans and the plans for our lives especially. He wants to remind us that the heaviness of the circumstances in our world can be carried by the truth of his word concerning the plans that he has for you and for your life, concerning the plans that he has for us. In Luke chapter 2, verse 19 If you remember that the shepherds had come and they had worshiped the child, we're gonna we're gonna talk more about the shepherds in a in a couple of weeks, but the lowest of the low were the first to receive the news. They came and they rejoiced and they shared, and afterwards again, I'm I'm using when I can the passion translation this morning because I want you to look at the story differently. In Luke chapter two, verse 19, it says, but Mary treasured all these things in her heart and she often pondered what they meant. Have you pondered about the questions in your life? There's not, listen to me, there's not one person that's in that COVID unit at LCMC this morning that thought they would be there during Advent. My prayer is they are pondering all of the things that God has said. There's not one family that thought they would be without a loved one because of COVID or because of massive rioting or because of murder or death. God challenges us to ponder the plans that he has for us. In Jeremiah chapter 29, 11, God said, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper. Now stop right there because we look at that word prosper and all we think of is money or power or something. Do you know that word prosper? Do you know what it is in the Hebrew? It is the word shalom. It means peace. Plans to peace you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, again, we know this verse so well, but listen to it, look at it in the Passion Translation. Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on him to guide you 
and he will lead you in every decision that you make. Do you believe that? That he will lead you in every decision that you make? I'm reading from his word, not my opinion. Become intimate with him in everything you do and he will lead you wherever you go. He will lead you wherever you go. How amazing is that? Romans 8.28, again, so familiar, but listen to it in a different translation. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. For we are his lovers who have been called, look at this, to fill his designed purpose. We ministered for four years up in Los Alamos, New Mexico. There is a place not far from there over toward the east, there is a weaving shop, a weaver's shop. And we would go in there from time to time. They make beautiful rugs and tapestries. It is, it is incredible. It is beautiful. And they have a loom right there. And you can watch them as they work. Here's what was interesting. As they work you're not looking at this beautiful rug or this beautiful tapestry. You're looking at the back and there are knots and there are, there are slits and there are strings hanging down. And I looked at this verse. So we are convinced that in every detail of our lives, we are convinced that every detail of our lives is woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. For we who are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose. Those beautiful rugs and tapestries on the front where you look at them, they're gorgeous. But on the back, the strings are hanging down, the knots, the political fighting, the COVID, the cancer. But God is there at every step in every detail. I love this Proverbs chapter 16, verse nine. Again, the passion translation within your heart, you can make plans for your future, but the Lord chooses the steps you take to get there. I'm so glad of that. I'm so glad of that. 40 years ago, Sue and I made plans for our future. 40 years ago today at two o'clock in the afternoon at Clovis Livingstone's Church of the Nazarene, we stood in front of the preacher and we made our vows. We spoke our vows. We sang to each other. We promised to love, honor, and cherish so long as we both shall live. 40 years ago today. And you know what? We had no idea where our steps would lead. But the Lord chooses the steps to take us to get here. In Proverbs 19, 21, a person may have many ideas concerning God's plan for his life, but only the designs of his purpose will succeed in the end. Do you see where I'm going here this morning? I'm not trying to give you my opinion. I'm trying to help us to see God's plan. We're looking at his word and what he has to say. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, again, the Passion Translation. Things never discovered or heard of before. Things beyond our ability to imagine. These are the many things God has chosen in store for his lovers. That's you and me. Things never discovered or heard of before. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24. The Lord Almighty has sworn, surely as I have planned, so it will be. And as I have purposed, so it will happen. 
we are so worried and we have been so worried over the political race that we voted on now three weeks ago. We are so worried and concerned about next year and what COVID will bring. Will we have to continue to wear these stupid masks? I'm sorry. Will we have to continue not to shake hands? Will we have to continue to meet in limited spaces with six feet of separation? I don't know. I have no clue. But do you know what I do know? This has never been one surprise to God. Never. November 29, 2000 or 2020, 2020, God knew it before one day came to be. When God created time, he knew today. He knew everything about it. The Lord Almighty has sworn, surely as I have planned it, so it will be. And as I have purposed, so it will happen. Do you know what I'm sure about? I'm sure that the will of God will be done. I'm sure of it. Now, please don't think God is a ro- or God has is, is created us as robots and he's up there directing every turn. He gives us his free will. He gives us the opportunity, but in everything that is happening, his will will be done. One more, Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. Again, please look at this. God is speaking to Jeremiah, the prophet, a young man, but he's speaking to you and me. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Psalm 139 talks about the fact that before one day came to be, God knew every one of them. He knew us in our mother's womb. He knew us before we were ever even a thought. He knew us. And every day he has planned. We have a choice. We can follow him. We can serve him. Or we can choose to walk away. Can I encourage you this morning that the good shepherd wants to carry you? The good shepherd wants to carry us through the changing plans of our lives. And the question is, will we let him? Will we choose to trust him? It's it's our choice. He's not going to make us. Will we choose to trust him? Will we choose to stop and take a breath? Will we choose to notice the glory of Christmas? I love everything about this season. I do. I love the lights and the decorations. I love the smells and the foods. I love, I love every part. But I don't love it because of the lights and the decorations and the smells and all of the stuff. I love it because it reminds me of what we're talking about here this morning, the glory of Christmas. Will we choose to trust him? Will we choose to let him carry us? God wants to show you his glory. There are times that God will go to supernatural lengths like he did to a young teenaged virgin girl in Israel over 2,000 years ago. His plan changed the day leading to the glory of Christmas in Bethlehem in her life. His plans will change you every day if you let them. Did you catch what Mary said? After the angel spoke and explained everything to her, she responded, this is amazing. I will be the mother for the Lord as his servant. Every one of us can say this, as his servant, 
I accept whatever he has for me. As his servant, will you accept whatever he has for you? Sometimes he goes to great lengths, sometimes to supernatural lengths. You know, Mary, she could have worried, she could have fretted, she could have grumbled or complained. She could have done any of those things, but instead she chose to trust. She chose to trust, to wait on the Lord to fulfill his plans. She chose to wait. She chose that day to let the good shepherd carry her. Will you choose that? Will I choose that? She chose that day to let the good shepherd carry her through the uncertainties that were ahead. She chose that day to let the good shepherd carry her when the questions from society, from her mom and dad, from her neighbors about her character and Joseph's character, she chose to let the good shepherd carry her that day, recognizing there would be hardships as she and Joseph would need more than they had. As the weight of those circumstances and the challenges mounted, God's glory came into the world at the right time. As the weight of your circumstances are mounting, as the challenges are getting more intense, as the questions grow, listen to me, nobody has this figured out. Nobody does. I'm sitting here this morning with our praise team here and some who came to pray over us. I'm sitting here this morning with our tech guys up in the booth, up in the, the nest. And in, other than that, an empty auditorium. I never would have dreamed. I never would have dreamed. Nobody has this figured out. Some of us are praying that when the clock strikes midnight on 1231, 2020, everything's gonna change. But can I tell you, Probably won't. We'll wake up on one one twenty one, and nobody will know. Will you choose to trust him? His glory came into this world right at the perfect time, just as he planned it. Just as he planned it. Galatians chapter four, verses four and five, they're probably familiar to you. But again, I'm using the, tra the passion translation. Listen to this. This is what Paul wrote. But when that era came to an end and the time of fulfillment had come, God sent his son. Born of a woman, listen, born under written law. Yet all of this was so that he would redeem and set free all those held hostage to the written law so that we would receive our freedom and a full legal adoption as his children. Wow. Yet all of this was so that he would redeem and set free all those held hostage to the written law so that we would receive freedom, our freedom, and a full legal adoption as his children. Such a promise is God's promise. It is weighty. It is glorious beyond all scales of measurement. God chose to invoke the plan of salvation. God chose by a divine conception into the womb of a young teenage Jewish virgin girl. She was entrusted to carry the son of God. Only God could come up with such a plan as that. 
Only God would have his son, King of kings and Lord of lords, the glorious, the awesome, Emmanuel, God with us, the bright and morning star, the wonderful counselor, mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Only God would have chosen a cattle's feeding trough, a stable full of hay and animals that probably smelt like it, a hole in the wall, two unknowns. Does that describe us? Unknowns? Do we just become another statistic in this world? Or do we trust God to a plan that will lead all who call on his name, the name of Jesus, to be saved to be adopted as sons and daughters into the family of God. What kind of God would come up with a family planning like that? The kind of God who would select a teenage virgin to be the mother of his only begotten son. The kind of God who would choose to change the plans of a former soccer mom with two kids in college to be pregnant with another God. The kind of God who would look at two young, young people as they stood and made a promise to love in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until death do us part. As crazy as it may seem in time, at times, God knows the plans that he has for you. They are plans for good and not for evil. They are plans to give us hope and a future. Hope. Hope and a future that includes the capacity to experience and enjoy the weight and the glory of Christmas. Do you want hope? Do you want hope? Do you need hope? Do you need something on this November 29, 2020 morning that goes beyond anything that you can do for yourself? It goes beyond your retirement plan or the political scene or the world scene or it goes beyond a disease that is rampant. Do you need hope? Can I challenge you? Let the good shepherd carry you. Let him carry you. Father, we need you. We need you to carry us. And I pray that you would. In Jesus' name.
there's some of you who are listening today that you have gone to church, you've played the game, and really that's all it has been, just a game, because you walk out of here and it depends upon you. It depends upon what you can do and how you can get through. And there are a lot of days that it's okay and it's all right, but there are a lot of days where you would rather do anything than get up and get out of bed. I want to remind you the Good Shepherd wants to carry you. He wants everything. He wants to forgive your sins. He wants you to trust Him. He wants you to come to a place where you say, I'm a sinner and I need forgiveness. He wants you to come to a place where you say, you've forgiven me now. I really want to be carried. I'm tired of trying to do it on my own. I'm tired of just going through the motions. I don't know who listens through the miracle of this opportunity to broadcast literally worldwide. I have no idea. Except what I do know is, is that God brings people. And he brought you here today, right now. And he's speaking to you. And he's asking you, will you let me carry you? You don't have to do this on your own. You don't have to make it on your own. You do not. If you will trust me, if you'll allow me, the Good Shepherd says, to carry you, there's no other we can turn to who can help us to find our way. Gentle Shepherd, come and lead us. For we need you to help us find our way. I want you to listen once more to the words as Sue sings them. I want to invite you as she sings them. This may be the time for you to just stop. And maybe you look up, maybe you close your eyes. It doesn't matter if you bow down, if you don't. It doesn't matter what you physically do. What matters is your heart. This may be the time when you say, I'm a sinner. I've got to have forgiveness. I can't do this anymore. Life is, is too much. I need your forgiveness. Some of you have done that. But unfortunately, everything else that you do, you do by you. Could I ask you to stop? Could I plead with you? Stop trying to do it by yourself. He wants to carry you. He has plans that are amazing. Let him carry you. Listen once again as Sue sings. There's no
want you to know we love you. God bless you. I pray that you will find hope in letting the Good Shepherd carry you in this Advent season. God bless you.